Every week we release our messages in two different ways. There's the message only version, which is just the talk version, which is what you're watching right now. But if you want to watch the music, prayer and message version, click on this button and it will take you right there. Today we're talking about how do we hear God's will in our life and we all need to hear God's will in our life. I think today's message is going to bless you. Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. So pray wherever you are that you are blessed. Well, today I have a message that I think is going to bless you greatly and I want to encourage you wherever you are to, to listen and to hear not just with the ears of your mind but actually listen with the ears of your heart maybe today god wants to say something to you that would just be fantastic and change your life change the day change your week change forever but we have to bring to it uh, an essence of an ability to hear and a hope to hear and a desire to hear and it really comes out of the substance of who we are. So I want to encourage you today. I pray that God would give me the words to speak. I pray that if God wants to say something to you, that I wouldn't get in the way of what God wants to say. You don't actually want to hear what I have to say. You want to hear what God has to say. And so today, this might be a day when you hear something that will touch you amazingly. Why don't we pray together as we begin? Loving Father, we come before you today and you see every one of us and you know us completely. There are no hidden secrets. There's nothing that you're not aware of. And so today, as we're listening, wherever we are, we ask that you would say something to us. And if you have something to say that that we, we need to do something about, make it clear to us. May we know what to do when we get to the end of this. May your word speak clearly. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, can I ask you this question? Have you ever heard the phrase, as you think, so you are? As you think, so you are. Have you ever heard, the, heard people talk about negative thinking? That how our thinking can destroy what we do? Have you ever heard of books that talk about, well, as you think, determine what you will achieve? Well, it's true. It's true. It's true. But when we think about it from a spiritual point of view or from the point of view of God in our life, it has an even more impactful and powerful uh, effect in our life. Our attitudes, our feelings, our emotions determine whether we achieve or whether we don't. They determine whether we are happy or whether we are sad. They determine this so much about our life. Um, And so it's so important how we think. It's so important how we think. Well, I want to look at one verse of Scripture and uh, as we start, and I'm going to look at it from five different translations of the Bible. I'm going to look at five different translations, and I just want you to have a look at this one verse. Have a look at this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. That's from the Bible that I use. If you have a look at the New American Bible, it says, With closest custody, guard your heart, for in it are the sources of life. With closest custody, guard your heart, for in it are the sources of life. Now, were we to go back to the very original languages and we were to read this in its original language, the word heart that we see here actually meant mind. The the heart meant mind. Uh, It didn't actually mean heart as we think. When we think about heart, we think about the center of us. We think about the motivation in us. But if we were to look at the original language, heart heart actually alluded to our thinking. And so if you have a look at another translation, it says this, Be careful what you think because your thoughts uh, run your life. Another translation says this, carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. And another translation of a translation says this, be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. Now, all of the motivational books that are written in the motivational industry around the world, we can all think to ourselves, they came up with that as you think. So you go, no, no, no. This is a Bible, Bible foundational thought. As you think, so you go. Well, I was in church the other day 
in this in this big church, big long narrow church, very high roof, wooden chairs, uh, and and there weren't a lot of people there. And I was sitting up the back, and and where I was sitting up the back came sat in front of us was a young young couple, and they had a baby, a young child that would have been probably. 18 months old, this beautiful little girl. Now, they came prepared because they were in for church for an hour, mum and dad. They came, they brought colouring in books and crayons. They bought storybooks. They bought other things that they needed, they needed to bring uh, with them. And then we started off into church, into mass. And, and this little girl being just eight, around 18 months old, she, she, she was full of life. She was beautiful, but a whole hour to sit still when you're that age is a long time to sit still. And so for a while she coloured in, but when she coloured in with her crayons, she didn't sit silently colouring in. What she did the whole time, she talked, she chatted to herself, she was having a whole conversation going on while she was colouring in. And then, and then she would get up and she'd walk along the, the row where she was sitting because sitting down for so long was tiring. And then all of a sudden she'd fall over and she'd bang her chin. She cried. She then, she then talked. She actually did a runner at one point in time and raced out of her chair out to the back and her dad chased her down and caught her. And then there were times when she got really quite loud and uh, there were times when she was looking at uh, other people, pointing at them, uh, laughing at them uh, and she was just doing what you do when you're 18 months old and want to know something virtually no one in the entire church knew she was there no one was distracted by her no one was 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 uh, not able to concentrate on what was happening in church because this little girl who was looked after by her mum and dad very well they were clearly excellent at what they were doing very well, um, was just being herself. But what I noticed is the longer that church went on, longer that church went on, mum and dad were kind of having a little bit of a meltdown occasionally because every time she would be doing colouring in or she'd, be, or she'd come and talk to them, she'd just talk in her little 18-month-old voice. Um, and, 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 and in, in, in a big hollow church with a high roof, it's got a kind of a wooden floor. It, it, that, that sound you can think is so loud that it distracts everybody. No, it didn't. I looked around, no one was even concerned about it, but they were. And so to the parents, what they probably thought was every time our daughter is talking, it's, it's like someone's got out all the crockery and all the cutlery and are slamming it down and it's making that sort of noise. The, the, the parents probably thought this is like, like, this is just so loud as if she's on a megaphone. But I looked around, no one was distracted whatsoever, but mum and dad. But mum and dad who were distracted because, because they thought their little girl was making a noise. But the truth is everybody else had blocked it out. We all know what it's like to have children around. And when she did get a little bit too noisy, they picked her up, they walked her out the back, uh, out the back for a couple of minutes and then they brought her back. Rosemary and I often talk about the fact that we had five children in six and a half years. It was like a daycare center. When we went to church, Rosemary jokes for a lot of the time and she said for 10 years I ended up walking in and out, in and out, in and out and spent so much time down the back. But want to know something? It was only once ever when someone behind us did say to us, you shouldn't bring, your ch ch you shouldn't bring children to church. But in all the years we'd only ever heard that once. That was, that's not a normal comment. And, 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 and sure, children can be distracting at times, and, but she wasn't running around. These parents were fantastic, but they, because of the way they thought, it depleted how they were going. And so what happened was towards the end, they, they, they packed up their stuff and they walked out before church ended. And I just couldn't let them go. I just couldn't let them go home thinking, thinking that they... That, that it had been all that bad because it hadn't been bad at all. And I followed him into the car park. I followed him into the car park and they just put their daughter in and I walked up and, and, and I stood on the side of the car and, and they put the window down and I said, I just want to say to you, I just want to say to you how delightful your daughter is. And I want to say to you just how well behaved 
she was today in church. And, he, and, and the father immediately went, oh, he said, yeah, no, no. And, 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 and I said, no, 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 no. And he was clearly frustrated. I said, no, no, she was excellent. And they said, oh, I don't know about that. And then and the mum leaned over and she said, thank you for saying that to us. Thank you for saying that to us. Well, you know why? Because it was true. They as a mum and dad had done so well, but because they had this thought in their mind that this is so loud, their little girl talking to herself that she's colouring in or, you know, bumping a chin or, or, or talking to them that everybody's distracted. No one was. See, as we think, so we go. As we think, so our life is diminished. Right now in this era of the coronavirus, there is no doubt it is causing devastation to businesses, to families, to circumstances, to economies. That's incredible. Keith Urban, the, uh, the, the country singer who Justin on my staff will love the fact that I'm talking about country music. He, 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 I read an article that he just said he was kind of thinking, well, he was just going to wait this whole, this whole coronavirus thing out. And then someone made the comment to him because he was thinking, what can I do? Someone made the comment to him, well, what can you do? And, that, and he said that changed everything. That changed everything because, because he realised there was some things he could do. And so now you can get, in, you can get on to Keith Urban Instagram concerts, uh, small concerts with, with Keith Urban. You know, he's finished off album, an album that he was writing all the time whilst he's in this lockdown, can't travel state because he said, that's what I've been doing my career. I travel. I perform, but I can't do it right now. See, as you think, so you go. As you think, so you go. Um, the, the, the thinking of this mum and dad was that, well, maybe they're thinking at home, I can't go to church anymore because our kids are too noisy, too uncontrollable. That little girl was not uncontrollable. She was beautiful and they were doing a great job. I remember being an altar boy when I was a, a, a young, when I was around 10 or 11. And I was so nervous being an altar boy, standing on the altar with the priest and all the others. And I remember I used to walk up with the water and wine when it got to the mass part and I'd be shaking like this because I was sick, because my thought was, everybody's watching me, everybody's watching me, everybody's watching me. And then one day it occurred to me, I was just standing there in this full church, standing there shaking, and I looked out and, and no one was looking at me and I'm shaking. And the thought occurred to me, no one is looking at you. And I remember I stopped shaking instantly. See, as you think, so you go. As you think, so you go. See, there are so many of us that we feel tired or we get bored or we get worn out or we lack energy in certain areas all because of how we think, all because of how we think. And it leads to a feeling of, of, being, of being negative, maybe even lonely, even isolated, uh, wondering if anybody even cares about us because we worry about what people think and about how we think. Um, sometimes we end up in jobs that we have to stay in. We, are, we have courses of universities that we've got to see to the end. We, there are children that we've got to care for day in and day out. We're in marriages that sometimes aren't all that fulfilling. We attend church on and on. We do different things that we've got to do. And often our thinking d dictates whether we're happy or sad, whether we're stuck or whether we're not. Negative thinking or, or, or even incorrect thinking can rob us of life. Negative thinking, the wrong way of thinking, seeing the, seeing the world half empty, the glass half empty instead of half full, or even just having wrong thinking, wrong thinking about something, wrong thinking can deplete us, can deplete us. How do we find, how do we, how do we change our thinking? How do we change our thinking so that we can change the world? and change our world. See, see, when we change our own, own thinking, what happens is we affect other people around us. I hope I see that young married couple again. I don't know their names. I hope I see them again. I hope I see them again. And I hope next time they come into church, they go, I'm not worried about what anybody's thinking. No one's listening to our daughter, but we are, and she's beautiful. Um, she's beautiful. 
See, see, we need to change our thinking. So, so how do you repair your heart when your thinking is damaged? And you might say, why do you have to repair your heart? Because our heart, if we think about it, the center part of us, who we are, Jesus consistently said what comes out of your mouth is an indication of the substance of who you are within. It's, is that we so often our thinking dictates what comes out. Our thinking dictates how we behave. Our thinking dictates the kind of way we relate to other people. And so, so we, can, we, we can treat other people poorly. We can affect our marriages. We can affect our relationships, our business, because of the way we think. But if we can repair our thinking, if we can transform our thinking, if we can m mend our attitudes, if, if we can replenish our inner core, if we can, and we can, we can, we can change our life and the life of so many people around us and even so many people who are living uh, with us. I, uh, I, I recently read a very sad statistic that here in this era of the coronavirus, that the divorce rate is, is, is much higher in many countries. I've also read statistics that say that domestic abuse is much higher than it has been in a long time right now uh, where we are. And so much of that is linked to thinking, is linked to being able to see our future, is linked to be able to see what we can do, what we can be. So much of that is linked to maybe things in our past when we've experienced defeat, disappointment, or when we've made stupid mistakes. And let's be honest, many of us have made mistakes and some of them have been stupid, you might say. Well, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, have a look at this on page 1054. If you read the Bible that I read, it says this. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect again. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. If you've printed off the handout, circle the word good, acceptable and perfect, right? And how does it happen? Underline the words renewing of your minds. Is that, is that, is that how, do we, how do we change? We don't look at the world. We don't look at the world and say, tell me how to behave. We don't look at the world. We don't look at circumstances. We don't listen to the person in church who says, you shouldn't have brought your children to church, Bruce and Rosemary. They make a noise. You know what? Little children make a noise. That's what they do. And that's okay. And there are times when that can go too far and you do need to take them out. Absolutely. But a lot of the time they just make noise and people learn to block it out. But if you conform to the pressure of the world, your peace will be robbed. If you conform to what other people say, if you conform to the complaining individual, your peace will be robbed. Your peace will be, your peace will be de de depleted. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, transformed, highlight that word, by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing, acceptable and perfect. See, in our life, we're all trying to figure out what are we meant to do with our life and what are we meant to be doing with our life now and how are we meant to be behaving right now in other words what we're trying to do is discern using my language the will of god because god has a will for each of us at every stage of our life right now in my life my, i've had my time of having little children they're grown gone they're having their own little children right now right and so god has a will for me now that was different than when I was that young married couple in church the other day. This will that God has for me now is to do what I'm doing right now in my life and where I am right now. And so, and so being transformed is, is, of our mind is in order to find God's will now. And what are you trying to find? You're trying to find what is God's will for you right now that is good, that is acceptable and is perfect. That's what we're all seeking to find. We're trying to find what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God for us where we are right now in the circumstances where we find ourselves. And so if you're affected by the coronavirus right now, God's got a will 
And, and what right now God wants is for you to find the good, acceptable and perfect will. What are you meant to be doing? How are you meant to be responding if, it's, if you're affecting you right now? So, so I want to give you three things, three things of how do we remain in this constant state of seeking God's will? How do we remain in this, this constant state of seeking God's will? Well, the very first thing that I found is that I read the scriptures. Now, this is a complicated book. Let's, let's be honest, it is. Parts of it are very easy and you can read it like a novel or you can read it like a story. You can read it like a child or if, if you learn how, you can read it like an adult. And I'd love to help you read it, read it in, in a way that it speaks to you. Um, it says in, Prover- in, in Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Bible gives wisdom to us. As you think, so you go. The Bible. The Bible gives wisdom to us. So if you're trying to think through what is God's perfect, acceptable will, what is God's good, perfect and acceptable will for me, the scriptures are an amazing place if you know how to read it to help you find to find that, that will in your life. The second thing that we need to do is how do we remain in a constant state of seeking after God's will is we have to protect our mind, which leads to our heart. We have to protect our mind, which leads to our heart. You have to protect what you think. There, sometimes, every day I read, I read three different news, news um, services to read, the, to read the news. I like to read from different countries. I read three different news services in order to try and get a balance on what's happening in the world. I actually like try, reading different news services that are opposed to each other and have p- different political perspectives in order to get a greater balance of what it is. But there are stories that come up in the media. There are stories that come up in your, in your feeds, or whether you're following Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, where in, in, in the news. Well, I've just made a, story, a, a decision a long time ago. I don't want to read that story. I don't want to read that story because the world meddles and pedals in gossip and in other people's business in circumstances that we don't need to be involved in. And sometimes there are stories and there are things that can happen that affect this mind. And this mind is the place where I'm trying to discern what is God's good, pleasing and perfect will for my life. And so therefore we have to protect our mind. There are certain movies that we should stop and go, do I really need to see that? Is that going to, is that going to help my mind? There are things that we should stop and say, am I going to read that? Are there conversations with family and friends that you should be in? Because there are some conversations with people that you love, with people that you know that you should walk away. Because there are things that your mind just does not need to have in it in order to help you be transformed. If you want to stay, if you want to stay with negative people and you want to, sorry, if you want to stay negative, hang out with negative people. Hang out with small-minded people. Hang out with people who are saying things can't improve. I love to hang out with people who say it can. I went to breakfast with someone uh, a week ago I went with the, and, who sat and talked to me about all the things that they can do right now because of the coronavirus and how, the, and the, how they can make a difference in their personal and family world. They're the people you want to be around. You want to find books that tell you about, about what you can be. You want to read, read books. You want to expose yourself to movies. You want to expose yourself to stories. You want to expose yourself to documentaries that are constantly feeding within you life, not taking away life. Gossip, innuendo, negativity, defeat depletes you. Whereas you want to be able to stop and go, I'm going to walk away from those things. I do it all the time. This, and, and, and that leads to the third point. Is, is protecting is to protect our mind is to guard our mind guard our mind so i protect it but i also guard it i protect it i make sure i make sure that i discipline it to make sure that i don't allow it to go to certain places so i protect it in terms of what i allow in it but i guard it i kind of just uh, channel it Guard it, channel it, whatever word you want to use in a particular direction. Have a look at this from Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, 
whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things. So you protect your mind by what you allow in. You guard your mind or channel your mind by what you allow yourself to put your mind to. Put your mind to. Because we want that perfect will. We want the right mindset, not the wrong mindset. Not the wrong mindset, right? You might ask yourself, well, how do I, how do, I do that protecting and guiding thing? You might ask yourself five questions. Uh, Ask, who am I pleasing when you're making a decision or a way you're behaving? Who am I pleasing? Who am I pleasing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, the other thing that I've found that helps me transform my, my mind and helps me protect my mind is that when I find myself in, the, in, in a particular pattern of thinking is that you have to catch your thoughts. Why am I thinking that? Oh, is that what it was like? Why, why am I doing that? If you listen to me speak often, I fall into the habit sometimes of saying, you know, I used to be very bad at it. And I never knew I said it at all. I never used to know that I'd finished a sentence by saying, you know, you know, you know. And it's a terrible way to listen to a talk. And the only way I found it was because some time ago, someone gave me a CD and I put the CD in my car and was listening to myself, um, uh, this CD of myself, which I don't listen to all that often. And I was, I was listening to it just in the car of a talk day. And I kept saying, you know, you know, you know. I never knew I did. And, and, I, and I'd finished talks and, and I'd listen back and all of a sudden I, I would say it so many times. The only way that I was able to catch it was I was able to do this fourth thing, was that I asked someone who loves me to point it out to me. Because we have these things called blind spots. We don't see how we think we don't see when certain things come up how we get scared how we get frightened we don't see when certain things come into our life how we behave and sometimes we need others to point out to us and say did you see that for example i've used this example before my mother was english and i come from a family of five boys my mother had this hospitality thing like the english do that's beautiful and when if you, anyone ever visited our house mum would feed you Mum would feed you, mum would give you something to eat. And, and when my four brothers and I would sit in front of the television, mum would come along and she would inevitably give us something all to eat. Being five boys, we were always eating. And, and it wasn't until I got married that Rosemary one day said to me, she said, have you noticed whenever you sit in front of the television, you eat? Now that was okay when I was young and skinny and active, but then over the years, it's better that I don't eat in front of the television. But I didn't know why I was eating. See, I had these habits that I never saw if it was not for someone else. Um, and then finally, the other thing that I've found that helps me change my mind is this, is review your day. At the end of your day or during the day, ask yourself, how'd you go this day? I do that in prayer. I do that in prayer where I've got to catch my mind. I've got to catch my mind. And I have to stop and say to myself, why am I thinking that way? How am I thinking that way? Who am I pleasing in those in that thinking by reviewing my day? Why am I doing that? And, and catch myself in the midst of it. And it transforms us. See, if you change your thinking, uh, you'll change your life. If you change your thinking, your life will change. You'll be happier. Everyone around you will be happier. You'll achieve far more you'll be so far more successful. The people who love you will love being with you even more. And in the end of the day, you'll be happy for this reason, that you'll be able to say, as I have sought God and transformed my life, I've been able to figure out what is good, what is perfect, and what is pleasing to God in my life. Hey, today, I pray that you would have an attitude that would transform you to be greater, better, more powerful, exactly in the place where you are. So to all of you who have little children and you go to church, yeah, there's a time, no doubt, when they get too noisy and you take them out. But most of the time, they're fine. Just the way they are. Beautiful. Everybody else, everybody else has blocked out the sound of their talking when they're doing their colouring in. 
They've blocked out the sound of their singing. They've blocked out the walking up and down the pew or the chairs. They've blocked it out. It's you, mum and dad, it's you, whose thinking is everybody can hear, but no one is. We do that in so many areas of our life, in our marriages, in our friendships, in our careers, in other circumstances. And if you can catch your thinking, if you can change your thinking, your life will change. If you can change your thinking, your life will change. Loving Father, we thank you today that you love us. Allow us, Lord God, to change our thinking in order to do your perfect will in our life. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of days ago, I got an email from a lady who had ordered a book from us, but for some reason it hadn't turned up. And whilst I don't normally answer all of those messages as our team do, I, I made a decision that I would give this person a call. And so I called them and it turned out to be a lady who was 91 years old. And she wasn't sure she'd filled out the forms correctly uh, to get the book that she was after. And, uh, and we got into a lovely conversation and she said to me, she said, I heard you give a talk in 2012. And she said, I wanted to thank, I want to thank you because my life is now filled with God. It's filled with the Holy Spirit because you came to where I was. And I remember being so surprised and so shocked because to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm not sure I remember ever having met this lady, but she remembers. And the reason that we were able to go was because as one of our staff used to say, someone else has come along and made it possible for us to go and share the gospel. In other words, they've been able to pay it forward because they've been blessed. Well, I wanna ask you today, will you help us to share the gospel with more and more and more people, both young and older? I can't do this without your help. And so I'm asking today, would you stand with us? Would you financially support us as a ministry so that we can share the gospel so that more people can say, I'm filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm filled with God in my life because you came, because I listened. Uh, I wanna ask you, would you help me? I can't do this. I really can't do this. The gospel changes lives. It changes people's direction. And I'm asking for your help. Would you go to the Give tab or would you go to this address? On the, on, online and help us. I call everybody who gives a, a faith builder to everybody who gives uh, on a weekly or fortnightly or monthly basis and you've set up a way to do that with us. I call you our faith builder partners. I, you are really the ones that make it so possible for this to happen uh, and to be able to be confident that we can share the gospel with so many people. It changes people's lives. There are many, many more people like this person who today has faith in a deeper way, in a deeper way than they did because someone else helped commit to making this work. Would you help me today? Uh, I really ask you for your help. I can't do it if you don't help me. Loving Father, I thank you today for every person who hears the sound of my voice today. I pray that your Holy Spirit would work in their heart, their life, move in them right now and lead them ever deeper into your presence. Come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Well, thank you everybody for being with me. I pray that you know that God is with you, that God wants to speak and God wants to lead you. God wants you to know His will. Hey, we'll see you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.